So that, that definitely uh, calls for a question regarding, and I'm turning to, to Andrew Brown, um, uh, regulation has an impact. We well see, uh, first it creates a momentum. Uh, when it's mandatory, it incentivizes behaviors. Um, and there is, uh, w that's one aspect of the coin. The other aspect is um, public policies can incentivize also with subsidies the use of this uh, energy or the other and behaviors in general. How do you look at it from the OECD standpoint? Uh, yes, so the, the OECD, I think, is a wonderful forum for our member countries to have conversation with one another, to explore what has been working, what are the lessons learned from policies. And I think that there are three angles that we're taking a look at uh, that are quite important. And the first being that there's not necessarily going to be one silver bullet which solves the circular economy problem. And so rather we're looking at a policy mix and how can you combine several policies to create the incentives such that the sustainable or the environmentally friendly choice is the one that's the most obvious choice. Uh, and so this begins by taking a look along the life cycle. When we talk about products, they have impacts, environmental impacts from their extraction, during their use, all the way to the end of life. And so if you have a, just a singular focus on one of these parts, you will miss the larger picture. Um, and when we take a look as well, we, we see there are opportunities. You mentioned regulation. Regulation has a role in removing some of the most obviously hazardous elements of products to remove them from the market to make sure that they're not creating problems as well with design. When we know a particular design makes sense, this can have a particular role. Then there are price-based mechanisms such as subsidies or taxes to make that choice the obvious choice. As well at the OECD, we have been looking at extended producer responsibility for over 30 years. This is taking a look at making producers responsible for the post-consumer or the post-use stage of the life cycle to incentivize better design choices. Um, then we talk about another angle for policy that we've looked at is around geography. So with circular economy, I think that the average citizen may have their first interaction with circular economy with the public sector in terms of their municipality, that it's often the municipalities that are doing recycling systems. Uh, and so this starts at a very local stage, but also there are domestic at the national level as well as at international level that are quite important for making policies for uh, circular economy. So you mentioned uh, that uh, there was the biodiversity. This angle is there's the meeting happening with the Convention on Biological Diversity this week. Last week it was plastics. So having an international focus is going to be critical. When we talk about plastics, we ran two different scenarios of our macroeconomic model and determined that it would require an internationally focused policy to really move us towards where we want to be with the capture of plastic waste and the recycling levels that we seek. And then the, the last bit that I'll mention is around justice. So I think that this has been something that has been lacking in previous discussion around mm. environmental policy. Uh, but uh, when we talk about this at a national level, this can mean providing for underserved, previously underserved communities, making sure that we're contacting them and involving them in the policy making process. Uh, also at an international level, you have to make sure that when we're building these new economic systems that they're just. If they're not just, they're not really sustainable. And when we talk about plastics, one example here uh, we could uh, bring in is around the OECD. We did a study on the cost of capturing all plastic waste to making sure that this was no longer leaking to the environment. When we looked at the least developed countries, there was a cost saving at having a circular policy ambition as compared to a linear policy approach. So there are opportunities when we look at an internationally just system as well that this can make sense financially as well. Interesting. So that's a very comprehensive uh, uh, approach to the cycle.